Second station of cardiology is the chest pain history. This is very important station. Uh, you may face it during your exam. Uh, a patient presented with chest pain, please take a full history from this patient and there's some discussion point. The main discussion points for a chest pain patient is regarding the myocardial infarction and angina and unstable angina, the acute coronary syndrome. So here you have a patient who is 62 year old presented with chest pain and take please take the full history from this patient. Discussion point will be uh, regarding the management of MI and how ST elevation MI differ from a non-ST elevation uh, MI, how to differentiate this uh, uh, if you have a non-ST elevation. Some hints and tips during taking history of chest pain. Remember that the patient is the same, understand why he, uh, he was referred to the hospital. All the risk factors for heart disease must be mentioned during history, must be taken during history, like smoking and so on. We will take this in the next few slides. Um, determine types of symptoms and affect, uh, uh, is, they affect, is the symptoms affect uh, patient life or not and uh, uh, any concerns of patient may have summarize and agree plan uh, to discuss this with your uh, examiner for differentiate diagnosis the main differentiate diagnosis for a chest pain is acute coronary syndrome and there is other uh, differentiate diagnosis the investigation should be sent is the general investigation, but we will uh, add the cardiac enzyme like creatinine kinase and troponin at a few hours. ECG is the main. Imaging like ECHO, uh, we may send the patient for ECHO also and consider coronary angiography. This is the main investigation for acute chest pain. Management of acute myocardial infarction, the management is romance. The management is romance. Reassurance, oxygen, morphine, aspirin, and nitrate, globidol, grill, and inoxaparin, uh, inoxaparin or heparin. Uh, the, 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 the steps here are uh, ABC should be done first as any emergency condition but remember the oxygen is high flow the aspirin is 300 milligram the globidogrel is also 300 milligram uh, uh, nitrate uh, spray or infusion morphine and antiemetic also a uh, thrombolysis if uh, indicated consider angioplasty and monitor the patient on a cardiac care unit the risk factors that must be mentioned in the history of the patient, uh, if they are positive or negative, you must mention it. If there is any past medical history of uh, ischemic chest pain, if the patient is smoking or not, if the uh, patient cholesterol is previously elevated or not, if there is obesity or not, or if there is positive family history or not, blood pressure uh, change uh, elevated or not and diabetes uh, also those are the main risk factor for ischemic heart disease all these must be mentioned during history taking and uh, presented to the examiner if the examiner asked you about uh, how to prevent or, or secondary prevention of myocardial infarction uh, there are uh, four options here we have uh, the first uh, lifestyle changes uh, like physical activity stopping uh, smoking dietary advice increase omega-3 fatty acids oily fish 
and alcohol intake uh, sensible. Uh, second thing is to optimize the risk factor. Third is to do cardiac rehabilitation and four is the main drugs like AC inhibitors, aspirin, beta blocker, statin. Those are the combination that reduce the secondary uh, myocardial infarction. Clopidogrel for up to 12 months. Other things you have to consider to patient coronary revascularization. Again, rapidly differentiate diagnosis of uh, chest pain uh, is myocardial infarction, angina, pulmonary embolism, pleurisy, pneumothorax, which is rare in medical cases, not very common like the trauma, uh, aortic dissection, pericarditis, dyspepsia, and musculoskeletal, which is the most common uh, in young patients. Here we have some notes about the myocardial infarction. Uh, sometimes the pain is absent, especially in those patients with diabetes. We call it silent MI or silent killer uh, because the patient does not feel a pain well. Uh, and also elderly patient and patient under anesthesia, all of these are, uh, may suffer from silent MI. Late complication of uh, myocardial infarction, pain and the stiffness of left arm and shoulder and the frozen shoulder syndrome. Regarding the ECG, remember the uh, V5, V6 and lead one is for lateral uh, uh, lateral chest lead or lateral MI if there is ST elevation. Uh, V1, V2, V3, V4 is anteroceptal and lead 2, lead 3 and AVF is for inferior uh, myocardial infarction. So earliest sign for STEMI ST elevation MI is hyperacute T wave uh, elevation, ST segment elevation. And normal ECG does not rule out acute MI. Always remember, if you have a patient with chest pain, patient with chest pain, and they show you a normal ECG, this is, this is not rule out acute MI. You have to ask for a cardiac marker. You have to ask for cardiac biomarkers. So cardiac biomarkers, uh, cardiac biomarkers like uh, myoglobin, the earliest one, a troponin, the most accurate one, and creatinine uh, is the best to detect tree infarction later on. Uh, regarding the treatment, regarding the treatment again, the first drug, if they ask you what's the first drug to be given in the emergency department, it is aspirin. What's the second drug? It is heparin or enoxaparin. The third important drug is a nitrate. Other like oxygen, morphine, which are not a routine in all patients. Uh, coronary angioplasty, it is better to be done in the first hour, two hours of patient uh, chest pain. Drugs that improve mortality of ischemic patient is the ACE inhibitor, the statin and beta blocker. Those drugs uh, are good in uh, improving mortality rates of uh, ischemic patients. If they ask you what about the surgery in this patient, patient who have MI and uh, need surgery, and this patient uh, underwent a stent, for example, catheterization and stent, the, the ideal is no operation before six months. No operation before six months. If the patient has a stent but he needs urgent surgery, do, do not stop clopidogrel. Clopidogrel never to be stopped before surgery, even if it is uh, urgent surgery because there is risk of thrombosis. 
if the patient on double antiplatelet and this patient uh, and this patient will underwent endoscopy endoscopy uh, uh, really in endoscopy we don't have any bleeding so continue both aspirin and clopidogrel continue both aspirin and clopidogrel if the patient with a stent and on warfarin and will do surgery you can stop warfarin you can stop warfarin